I think the study of intersemiotic translation is a response to the urgency that confronts the phenomenon of translation in general. Firstly, there has been a growing awareness of the nature of translation, that translation involves the transference of all science, not just lingual science. Secondly, it is also a response to the urgency to examine the ongoing broad move away from words to images. But beyond the purpose of finding the missing pieces of translation, what I am interested in is that intersemiotic translation offers us a chance to recognise the complexity of communicational phenomenon in digital ages. In that sense, when intersemiotic translation is applied to the analysis of film, the limit of the classic Jacobsonian paradigm of the interpretation of verbal signs by means of signs of non-verbal sign system often finds its limits challenged by the complexity of instances of translational behaviour itself. As Patrick and Tracy have rightfully discussed that even in the case of film adaptation of a novel, where the transmission between verbal and non-verbal is most obvious, it must be emphasised that film's other parameters, cinematography, editing, sound, are governed by other quality-determining discursive practices. But how do we understand these quality-determining audiovisual devices is the key to understand how intersemiotic translators translate and mediate between cultures. It is to this end that the proposition of system of intersemiotic translation models can be of help. Intersemiotic translation models refer to the non-verbal prior materials of film. It refers to the start text whose features are deliberately utilised by intersemiotic translators. The term model is borrowed from Yvon Zohar, referring to the combination of elements, and rules and syntagmatic relations that are imposable on the product and are often subjected to a repertoire under culture. In this context, an intersemiotic translation model or an IST model is an audiovisual construction which are shared and belonging to by a cultural group. It supports the translator's semantic strategy as pre-existing audiovisual patterns while presenting identifiable features of culture to be understood as images of that culture. This relates to Rachel's theory of cultural translation with the concept of to be look atness as its primacy. The concept of to be look atness describes the situation whereby one culture is viewed by another culture. Now Chow moves the concept beyond that biased representation between cultures by saying that the state of being looked at is not only built into the way non-Western cultures are viewed by Western ones, more significantly it is part of the active manner in which such cultures represent or ethnographize themselves. These terms describe the uniqueness of visual as opposed to verbal and concerns two distinctive features of film as the medium of translation, which namely transmissibility and accessibility. A transmissibility refers to the aspect of a work that is literal, transparent and thus capable of offering itself to a popular or naive handling, whereas accessibility defines the translation immediacy of perception permitted by its literalness and transparency. Literalness refers to a superficial, a crude or naive and is connected with the key notion of putting together and it is through putting together that a culture is visually translated as a fable, a meaningful interpretation of the world, enabling the audience to experience a culture by looking at it as an audiovisual construction. Accordingly, the audiovisual texts produced within the cultural group are each self-representations of that culture, a meaning-making mechanism to look at cultures and a spectacle to be looked at by another culture. It is through this text, culture is translated. Following this logic, when we look at the specific cases of China, it is not hard to come to the conclusion, as Paul Borman did, that China is already and only ever a discursive and textual construct. The many different kinds of visual, sonic and narrative of celebrations of the Chinese nation. If, according to Chao, the broad move from verbal to non-verbal and from interlingual to intersemiotic means that cultural translation have to take consideration of other media such as radio, film, television, video, 
pop music and so forth, then what is transmissible and transparent can be applied not only to films, but also to other audiovisual signifying practices, which, unlike written text, offer a literal, transparent and accessible way of representing a culture. To apply uh, intersemiotic translation models, translate their embedded cultures as transparent audiovisual constructions to be looked at by members of different cultural groups and as fables, which is meaningful interpretations of the world. They are each to be considered both as a cultural lens of meaning making and a spectacle to represent that culture itself. And it is by employing these IST models that the filmmaker translate and mediate between cultures. As these signifying practices are heterogeneous, IST model can be much more efficiently discussed if regarded as a system. The proposed system consists of two levels, uh, culture and media. The first level, cultural model, refers to the audiovisual patterns that are cultivated within a cultural group and presents audiovisual construction that is possible to represent that culture. Culture in this context can be regarded as uh, the systems of shared meanings which people who belong to the same community, group or nation use to help them interpret and make sense of the world. Therefore, a model of home culture referred to the patterns adopted by translators cultivated culture and foreign culture referred to those that is from another culture. The second level is media model which regard to the specific medium of the object of study. In this case, while we are concentrating on the case of film, intramedial refer to the patterns within the film system, while as intermedial refer to those that belong to another media system, such as painting, and opera, music, and other art forms. Therefore, in combination within the proposed system, there exist four types of models, namely home intermediate IST model, which is the non-filmic audiovisual patterns within the translator's home culture, and home intramedial IST model, which is the filmic audiovisual patterns within the translator's home culture, and foreign intermediate IST model, which is the non-filmic audiovisual patterns from a different culture, and foreign intramedial IST model, which is the filmic audiovisual patterns from a different culture. These IST models mediate effects in the representational channels of film, uh, namely mise-en-scene, cinematography, editing and sound. This system is proposed as a basis upon which the interactions between culture and media can be analysed clearly, so that the complexity of signifying practices and cultural production is given full tribute. Each media is a complex, each culture is a complex, and the IST models present as a constant flow in between. Many often multiple IST models are employed and blended within one film or one film sequence, thus invites both transcultural and intermedial gaze, as will be shown in the following case study of Low Year's 2006 film The Summer Palace. The director Lao Ye, one of the glazing stars among the so-called sixth-generation Chinese directors, have presented a controversial and yet one of the few Chinese films that translate the China of the 1980s and the 1990s. A China that is affected by the incident of 1989, and it is retold through the love story of a heterosexual couple. Well, I do not intend to talk about the production of the whole film, but only to focus on part of the film to exemplify how Lao Ye translated China by blending the many IST models that he employed. That is, the three minutes montage over the famous pop music, Don't Break My Heart. The three minutes sequence that translate China over a span of eight years after 1989, where the lives of the individual and the spatial temporal context of the social undertakes radical changes. In this sequence, Loya employs the model of the French New Wave, 
Well, we have to know that this is a director who is very open with him embracing the works of Jean-Luc Godard and François Truffaut, who are renowned for the relentless use of handheld camera move and jump cut. A handheld camera move is adopted as an intentional technique of making the camera shake to convey veracity. Veracity in these circumstances often describes the situation faced by the characters of the French New Wave, especially the characters of Guida and Truffaut's films. The hoovering, detached, pointless characters are constantly haunted by anxiety. Handheld camera move is employed here in Summer Palace because the same situation is now faced by low years characters. Now, this is represented at the beginning of the sequence following the student's annual military training, where a handheld camera is employed to look at the students in green uniforms chasing the extended bosses, implying the anxiety and confusion of the students now facing discipline from their nation state. Under this lens, the life tracks of the individual is further depicted. The students living in Beijing for Berlin, the female character Yu Hong, drops her education to her hometown, and the male character Zhou Wei leaves Beijing to Germany, and Yu Hong leaves her hometown and moves to the south, and Zhou Wei and his secret now girlfriend join their friend in Berlin, and Zhou walks hastily on the street of Berlin against the alienated foreign cityscapes. Their life moments are also translated with that of jump cut, um, another distinctive feature in filmmakers uh, like Guida, uh, which always break the flow. As uh, David Bordwell have described, it is a sensation or an experience with the kind of chances and hazards that intervene in life. It is another powerful device to focus, to break the flow and focus on the momentary feelings of the individual. If Laoya's intention, as he describes, is to render a realistic living status of Chinese students in 1989, and that the employment of handheld camera and jump cut is to communicate a veracity to a sense of documentary as it did for the filmmakers for the French Neo Wave, then it is not hard to understand why Lo Ye, in addition to the handheld camera move and jump cut, also employs directly the documentary footages as intermedial ST models. Whereas the former are used to translate life of the students, the latter are employed to translate the change of social historical context. The employed documentary footages inscribe moments of major historical events with a span of eight years after 1989. They represent uh, the breakdown of the Berlin Wall, the collapse of the Soviet Union, China's opening up, and the development of special economic zone, and then the return of Hong Kong. A college of these uh, documentary models of either foreign or home uh, make up the historical chronotope and implies the progression of time. Beyond the translation of time, however, this employment established also two relationships. The first one is between China and the West. By adopting the spectacles from both home and foreign to translate the timescale of China, Lo Ye have already established the unbreakable connection between China and the West. In this sense, China can exist only within its interrelationship with the West, with China's major political movements always conducted in terms of her relations with foreign powers. The second relation is China as a nation state and the students as individual members within that state. Now, if we notice that the documentary footage is edited in parallel with the life of the key characters in the film, it will be interesting to find that the historical moments in those documentary footages communicate positiveness with images of progression, freedom, peace, democracy, prosperity. China progresses together with the world. China has regained its political might by reclaiming its lost land. While on the other hand, the individual figure is leaving home, is going through exile, whether inland or going abroad. In this sense, what is communicated is that the progression is at the expense of the sacrifice of the individuals. So development is also at the expense of their forgotten wounds. This sense of misplacement communicated through montage are also expressed in Lo Ye's interview. In my story, I try to show that it is easier to change the outside than the inside. 
the pain and cost in the 80s continue to be felt in the 90s and beyond. The confusion in people's heart is not given enough attention when we weigh up social changes. This strange interaction is strengthened by the employment of the background song, Don't Break My Heart, written in 1991, produced by the most famous Chinese musical band Black Panther, a phenomenal band known across China in the 1980s and 1990s. This song was circulated nationwide at the time to the extent that taxi drivers on the street would be humming the song. To this sense, Low Year's employment of this home intermedial as the model is to be understood as that of rendering a face of the 1990s, a symbolic empowered device to render the memory of China in the 1990s and suggest the changes that follows. It is also a voice spoken by members of Low Year's home culture, which is the voice spoken by the Chinese people themselves. We must ask deeper towards the meaning of employing this voice and to understand what voice are they speaking. This extends beyond its symbolic function of translating time. It is also a model employed to communicate an emotional bondage. Above all else, this song is about love, or to be more precise, the broken up couple whose hearts are already broken singing Don't Break My Heart. The obvious purpose for this employment is that it's a love story, and this sequence tells about what happens after the two main characters breaking up and departed from each other. It is a summary of their love that has a complete meaning because it has now ends in heartbreak. Their words to each other is outspoken with the song singing, maybe there's too much that I do not understand, maybe this is my fault. They are distancing from each other and having to live with that aching pain that cannot be healed. This emotional bondage has to be taken deeper. According to Lao's own words, it is a story set against that background. And Lao Ye also openly responds to this point in the interview by assimilating the 1989 incident to a lovemaking between the students and the government. The heterosexual love shares this resonance to the love of nation and is thus employed as a seduction, a turning of a sign away from its meaning to mean something else. As we have argued that through the employment of documentary footages and handheld camera move and jump cut, Lao Ye have already established a misplaced co-evilness. The nation is progressing at the expense of the individual's sacrifice. Now at this moment, the love of nation and the hers that comes afterwards can be translated all the more fully with the love song and exemplified by the lyrics such as what you have is your body, what I have is my memory. What is outspoken is the generation's voice and the aura of that memory that has been repressed, forbidden, tabooed as a huge absence. In conclusion, the system of intersemiotic translation models allow us to see phenomena of film for the complexity of it and how filmmakers translate a culture using different translational fusions. Each eyes model is at the same time a spectacle to be looked at by members of different cultural groups and a lens to communicate meaning. It is through appropriating these IST models that an intersemiotic translator translate and mediate between cultures. With the putting together of these IST models, Lao Ye enables that China to be looked at from multiple angles, both from the neglected and forgotten individual and from the general social historical background's point of view.
These employed IST models mutually supported each other with the different angles and layers of meaning making to construct the China, a spatial temporal specific China that is strongly absent and paradoxically strongly present in the modern history within the repressed cultural memory of its people.